My friends, it has often been said that I like ships. My friends, I like ships. No, friends, I love ships. It's a mostly fun, not harmless activity where fans can gather around and throw gang signs at each other and get into pointless arguments about which fictional characters should be together and why shipping the wrong them makes them more criminals. If shipping could be a contact sport, it would be the Hunger Games. But the fan art is fire, so we'll all forgive it. Or you're a sadist like me and just like to watch the internet burn. But have you ever asked yourself, has shipping ever gone too far? I know, crazy thought, look up the Onesler fandom. This shit's a falling rock with no bomb and it will last so long as we do and probably be picked up by aliens after the fact. But if you ask me, has shipping ever ruined a show? Then the answer is, of course, yes. And today I'm here to talk about it. Because while Miraculous Ladybug has always been a dumpster fire that the French created to destroy us, it at least lets you know exactly what you're in for. Star vs. the Force of Evil, though, jumped you when your back was turned and laughed at you forever daring to care about a blue-haired saint. We're here to talk about how Starco ruined the forces of evil, and I'm making no apologies for this one. So I guess some of you don't know what Star Versus is. Which is okay, I was dick riding Gravity Falls 2 back then. Star Versus is the story of a magical girl named Star who, after burning down her own kingdom, got booed by her parents to Earth. Because no one cares about what happens to America anymore. And there, she teams up with a kung fu nerd she shares a house with named Marco. This duo went on magical dimension hopping adventures, all while fighting the forces of evil and discovering the true evil, high school. And racism. All in all, this show really slapped in its first season. The plot hadn't really kicked in yet, so we mostly had fun week-to-week -week adventures, where some of the minor story beats get set down and villains introduced. But mainly, you just here for a good time, delivering some buckwild comedy, some super likable characters, then talk about historical revisionism and star realizing she's a racist. Yeah, this show had some serious right turns, but at its core, this show was always about the characters. And this first season started the shipping early, with Marco and Star being best friends right out the gay. Yeah, best friends. Not that, oh, they're friends, but they're really in love with each other and can't say it or dating other people. No, they're established early on to just be platonic friends. Marco has another girl that he likes named Jackie, with Star playing the hype woman for him, while Marco helps her dodge her old ex. While he may be a demon boyfriend, that doesn't mean he was a bad one. He did that shit on his own. Now, going into this show, I didn't want Star and Marco to end up together. Kim and Ron were cute, but if fantasy cartoons can't let boys and girls be friends, there's no hope for any of us. Not every show with boy-girl leads have to get paired up like that. Sometimes people are just friends and making them fall in love romantically just creates a more generic relationship than the one they already had. Yeah, you hold hands now. Cool. Enjoy picking up Ikea furniture. Friends just almost always feel better written fiction to me. Because it removes this expectation of having to do things. Like the villain kidnaps your boyfriend. Congrats, that's immediately gonna be your focus. Your friend gets kidnapped. <sighs> How well do you really like this friend? Because as far as we know, this could just be a side quest and someone else can pick it up. So when that friend does have to then show up and save their life, it makes it all the more special because unlike your boo, they're doing this for free. And in the show, Star and Marco bounce each other out perfectly. He was a dork who could never shoot his shot. She always did, but never bothered to aim. Together, they made a functioning person that the rest of the universe had to watch out for. Super sweet and supportive. It didn't matter if they were breaking out princess concentration camps or watching TV and making nachos. They were friend goals, and then the Blood Moon Ball happened. The Blood Moon Ball is a special episode to this show. Because not only is it gorgeous visually, the song is amazing, but it's also the one that made Star and Marco into Starco, and holy shit, go back. Now, to understand this episode, we gotta talk about the other guy, Tom. Tom, in the first couple of seasons, is an asshole. He's hot-tempered, possessive, and does everything in his power to get back together with Star. Whether that's hiring someone to give her depression, kidnapping Marco, he's the worst kind of ex. Claim that he's worked on himself to get you back, then snap back to his old habits when any opposition comes up. He has that bad boy, I can fix him thing going on, but most of us just wanted him gone. It's this teen hormonal volcano that kicks off the Blood Moon Ball when he gets Star to go with him to the Demon Ball. She said she'll go, but this isn't a date. He said we'll see, while Marco decided to sneak along because they're the dynamic duo. When Star goes, he goes, even though Star can handle Tom. They all get there, the music plays, Tom walks away, and Marco in disguise dances with Star, giving us this. Yeah, this sent out a million ships to sea. At this point, I kind of just internally gave up. Because 
it's just that moment where you just click in your head. I was like, oh, fuck. They are going to get together. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. They just go out of their way to throw in this super romantic moment for what has always been a platonic room. Like, I secretly hoped that this was going to be some subversion down the line. But at this point, I, I was just going against the flow. And this just became inevitable. See, on top of the mystery romance of the Blood Moon Ball, he also allegedly soul bonded them, making them being a couple inevitable, and also set up one of the most underwhelming plot threads in anime in history. Now, while nothing happened by the end of this episode, Star was just left pretty pissed at Mark over showing up, even though he was right that Tom was being shady and was playing the one free wife moon card. But no one's happy at the end, but they're still friends. Nothing crazy happened like Star catching feelings. Star Butterfly is in love with And his name is Marco Diaz. Oh no. Okay, speed round. After this, things went back to the status quo. Marco and Star are friends. They adventure and save each other's lives all the time. Star blows up her magic wand to save Marco. They're still living together. And Marco is still pining for the local cool kid, Jackie. Which, okay. Now we have to talk about this and the incredibly disappointing story of all the women who end up dating Marco. Jackie is the apple of Marco's eye. She's the cool skater kid he's had a crush on since he was in Pampers. Always too shy to hang out with her, the writers put Jackie's existence into a Schrodinger's cat type of scenario. Is she a character with her own life or is she just a goal for Marco to pursue? The answer is somehow both and none of these things at the same time. Because while it took forever to get these two to end up together, they actually end up having really good chemistry. Her surf skater vibe being a good match for Marco goes nervous over analytical style. And just fun to see someone who's like, oh my God, I have this idea of who this lady is. I've been just pursuing this for so long. He gets started to hang out with her and he's just like, fuck, we're just having a good time. This is, she's just fun to be around. Then when it looked like a healthy relationship was finally starting to develop, ship to ship combat engaged. Because Jackie went from a tool to further Marco's character to an instigator for stars. To realize she likes the red hoodlum, forcing her to have an honest conversation with Marco about how she feels. Oh, hold that, that Marco. No, I'm lying. Starburst decides to bury those feelings all the way down till she's old enough to drink and make a scene at the wedding because she's committed to being his friend and doesn't want to ruin it because her mental health is optional. Becoming the number one Jarko shipper, and while I'm not super big into poly ships, I can get behind this. Like how the Earth circles the moons, Starko's time has come around and invalidated everything else in the show. Isn't it when they're not singing in unison while Jackie's standing right there, the Blood Moon is ruining other dates so that Star and Marco get more screen time together, with season three having the bold decision to move Star back to Muni, her home dimension. Marco finally gets a chance to just hang out with Jackie and see if they can make this relationship work. Stay amazing, okay? Was that? Just like that, two seasons of buildup, a couple fun episodes showing how they could work, but nah, show decide everyone hates this, kicks Jackie to the curb, and if you feel bad, you should. But don't worry, she gets a girlfriend later, because if Asami has taught us anything, it's that if you can't write her to be interesting, you can always just make her gay. Sorry Jackie fans, y'all got lied to. It's all cool now, because at least we can finally just get right to Starko. Yeah, another f***ing love triangle. Me. So yeah, remember Tom, Star's asshole demon ex with control issues? She took him back because of this. Also, Tom did a demon exorcism showing his commitment to change, so they're back together. And if that feels abrupt to you, it should. It happened in two episodes. Like, Tom and Star got back together the second before Marco moves into Muni. It was at this point, everyone collectively went, oh no, as it dawned on us that this is it. This is gonna be the entire show. Just a series of conveniences for why these two aren't together till the end. Like, shows do this all the time, but I don't think I it's ever been more blatant in a cartoon than here. And as a fan of this show, I can confidently say that this is bullshit. These people will always know what the show's trying to do. This is how transparent this show is. The season started with Star sniffing Marco's jacket and refusing to washing it because she likes his smell. Next episode, she's back together with Tom. Next episode after that, Marco shows up looking to date Star and he can't because Tomko's a thing. 
like it's weird because I'm not even mad or angry that like Marco missed his chance or like why did Star decide to get with Tom? It's like, no, we're just annoyed at all. Obviously, we're getting punked here. Like I live for that slow burn, but don't patronize me by making this so fucking egregious with the out of nowhere twist just to keep them apart. Like Tom was shitty and they do make him likable, but this was just, you just can't speed run all that character development to have Star flip like that in two episodes. If you see that throughout the seasons, yeah, I can see that switch happening, but to just do everything that quickly and to then have Marco just conveniently show up when it's just too late, you're gonna annoy the audience. Now, people were pissed off about Jarko getting canceled like it did, and I know a lot of people that started shipping Tom and Star out of spite because fuck Starco for just being this grand epic that has to happen. And the sad thing was, Star ended up being more interesting with Tom than she was with Marco. Like, this is the weirdest saving grace of this period where Marco's just being this lovesick puppy slash whiny bitch, is that as problematic as Star and Tom are historically, when they're together, it just works. Because they feel like an actual teen couple. Two very flawed people who don't have their lives together, with fights, makeups, and all that other stuff people experience when they're being idiots. They care about each other, they're just not fully sure how to make this work, or fully make it work in a healthy, communicative way. And that just made it feel so much more real. Like, you know people like this. You knew people that like, oh my god, are they together again? Like. Fuck, I hope the best for them, but Jesus, last time. I know I end up liking that just a lot more versus the serotonin overload that was Starko or the wholesomeness of Jarko. It's not something that I thought I would like, but it slowly won me over as I watched it more and more. I was also very bitter, as I explained about Jarko, so maybe I was just looking for a petty revenge. Then because we had a nice thing going, awkward drama got shoehorned in, because of course it does. See, this is a kissing booth. This is Star and Marco trapped in a kissing booth. This is them kissing because Marco panicked and thought that's what he and the booth wanted. And this little Alex Hirsch hobgoblin is what trapped them inside till they kissed because he's a monster. Like I hate everything about this episode, like on a fundamental to my bone level. Like it stands with Korra season two of ship happening, not because it makes sense, but because Dory wanted more drama. And no one asked for this because you can have Marco and Star doing dumb shit like this. You would have Marco kiss Star in a way that would make sense and not be them being literally held hostage by the plot. Instead, they have a literal goblin lock them in a booth, refuse to let them out until they take a good picture, which in this case was just him wanting to see them kiss, and I'm starting to think that the goblin is just a pervert. It was ridiculous, and it pretty much threw their dynamic into the shredder. Because after this, we're just left with Marco being in an awkward I fucked up phase. Star is trying to hide what happened from Tom. And then the story peaked in season three, where after failing to take on the big bad, Marco tries to make Tom hate him by dropping this juicy reveal. Kiss star. What? Yeah, so you don't owe me anything. Now go. Wow, no hesitation. Which is supposed to hurt because they're apparently friends at this point, but Tom doesn't believe him. Calling your bluff! No, I, I really did kiss star. Oh. So of course season three ends with Tom and Star breaking up, deciding that this just wasn't for them, her heart's with someone else, but they'll remain friends and maybe keep in touch. No, they're still together, Marco's still here, and f we're in season four now. So fun story. One of my very first YouTube videos was me delving into everything that went wrong with season four. Watch it if you want. I hate it because it is so old and very much early me. But if you want my more in-depth thoughts on just the season four as a whole and how it ending kind of sucked, go check it out here. Because right now I'm just focusing on how the shipping affected the show, which was negatively. Because the plot basically takes a back seat to the shipping as we're stuck with filler episodes and more filler episodes and episodes that seem like they're progressing the characters only to get undone in the worst way possible. Because up until this point, the shipping was still pretty fun. Stuff like the kissing booth was awful, but the rest of the story kept it fun without it feeling like a miraculous dumpster fire. Because this show had an actual plot, giving the characters something else to focus on besides their hormones. Star was trying to end racism by throwing a mixed race party, an evil queen turned out to just be kinky and fucking this guy, with the evil old lady turning out to be the long lost heir to the throne. A lot happens and it kept the story progressing and our attention on to other things so that no one element could grow too big and consume the show. So guess what happened in season four? Congratulations, 
you plagued yourself. Tomko is on pretty rocky ground post my girlfriend kissed her best friend and spends more time with him instead of me, with even family time not doing the trick as they are slowly realizing that this isn't going to work. But rather than just having agreed to this and quitting it while they're ahead, or doing something insane like having Star break up with Tom to date Marco, because people might not like that, Tomko kept dysfunctionally chugging along till Tom finally got the balls to be the one to break up. Because he realized he was putting in all the effort and made even more painfully obvious when Star chose to go move back in with Marco on Earth rather than go on a little dimension hopping road trip with him. Which yeah, I do see why he would cut that off. Too bad they only realize this at the finale. At least they're doing fun things with Marco, right? 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 Now I want you all to know that the story I'm about to tell you might make you think that I'm lying. That I'm somehow making this shit up. But I swear to you that this is the honest truth. This is Kelly. This cute little Muppet has big hair and a big heart. She spent most of the series dating a guy named Tad, who was just part of her hair. Stay with me, it's a cartoon. So Tad and Kelly break up, because living rent-free and being voiced by Stoner Beast Boy is not a winning combination. I've been watching you all night. You have feelings for your best friend, dude. They broke up sometime in season 3, and because everyone hates the horse, Kelly became Star's only normal friend that she would hang out with, becoming the fourth wheel that got dragged around along with Marco to keep him from feeling lonely. Then, during a beach episode, Kelly and Marco have a moment, because they're both dealing with a breakup and not the fact that they're the only person available at the time. This leads to some shipping fuel later when Kelly is teased for wanting that mole, then season 4 rears its ugly head, Tomko is throwing itself off a cliff, and they can't have Marco look sad all season, so Kelly. The so they keep flirting with each other, with both of them realizing that this is going to be a PG rebound. Buddies. What's that? Well, you kind of help each other forget your old feelings, so you can move on. Also, you can kiss when the mood is weirdly romantic. <laughs> Yeah, friends with benefits. Now they could do something interesting with this, as Star could realize again that she's losing her shot with Marco, or Marco could actually develop some feelings for Kelly and question his relationship with Star. Doesn't matter though, they already broke up. No, not Tom and Star, Marco and Kelly. They broke up. No, not in the same episode, or the one after that. They broke up between episodes. These closures for winners, and if you ship Kelko, you're not one of them. Like, seriously, no jokes aside, 100% serious. They spent the beginning half of this season saying, okay, Marco might be moving on, he might go date Kelly. They did this whole blood moon ball thing that I'll get into later. Then they decide, fuck that shit, break them up between episodes. Between episodes. Like that gap that we don't freaking see. Am I missing something here? What is this horse shit? I don't think I've ever seen this level of disrespect to a ship in my life. Like if you like this shipping them as a couple, I guess I should want to say, fuck you. This is basically Charco again. Oh, with if they just skipped that episode and had Marco show up saying that he broke up with her. This was just so crazy. Like watching week to week when it happens. Even just talking about it just makes me like, it feels like a fever dream. It just doesn't feel real that they would have all this build up to it to have them actually be together. Then not even show them date and just have it be, oh, they broke up. Ha ha ha, so funny. I don't understand it. It is so crazy to me that a show that has so much shipping involved, that is so focused on getting people together, that it decides now we're not gonna even bother showing you the breakup or giving you a reason. They're just gone. And it's at this point you kinda have to realize Kelly, like Jackie, was being used as a prop to hold Marco back from Star, giving him an excuse to not be mopey because that's all Marco's love interests are. Placeholders. Starco was inevitable. And as soon as they served their purpose, they got rid out of the story. Starverse isn't the only show to do this. A lot of shows do this kind of shit, but the turnaround time is what kills me. It removes the chance to let certain characters bow out of the show gracefully, or let the people that actually enjoy these couples a chance to understand why they wouldn't work out. But there's a difference between a show making a couple grow dysfunctional and ending between fucking episodes. It's a slap to the face to anyone who supported these ships. Even casual viewers were looking around wondering what the hell just happened. And it makes all the episodes that were about them worthless in hindsight. So of course Starco does end up happening, but the journey there left you wondering if it was even worth it. Tom and Star's relationship kept getting dragged on, with Star being a worse and worse girlfriend while Marco and Kelly was holy shit, I am still reeling from that. The finale where Tom breaks up with Star, Tom then immediately goes to Marco and tells him to go hit that and he'll be fine with it, and then it just happens. Four seasons of buildup, three casualties, but it kind of just 
doesn't land for anyone but the hardest of hardcore Starco shippers. Something is seriously wrong if you can't even enjoy your own ship becoming canon. Star vs. I think is a good show overall, with a solid three seasons of quality content, with the fourth being meh, with the Jump the Shark finale. But looking at the show as a whole, I think shipping is one of the central reasons why it just lost traction in that final stretch, is it all comes back to that end game. Star and Marco. They were meant to be together, and the show made the mistake of treating that as fact rather than building up any potential competition. Just throwing away any character once they were done being a diversion to let other things in the show happen. Which is exactly how the show treated its non-Starco characters. Jackie was a goal to draw slice of life comedy out of Marco. Her relationship with him is what became the impetus for Star being isolated and getting jumped by Kappa Mikey. Kelly was only here so that we could pretend Marco was over Star, and Tom only came back to keep Star tied down for another two seasons. This shipping minimized and threw away characters when they weren't needed, created problems for the show later on, as it had so little material to cover. When it wasn't trying to do straw man racism or making the evil queen look better, we were back focusing on relationship woes that already felt tired. Because the drama and people that made it interesting were already cut out of the story, and those that were left were just repeating stale material. You could say that the show's problem was that it made Endgame too obvious, but I think you can still have a fun time even when you know how things are gonna end. But here's the thing, when the show feels like the plot is what's keeping the ship alive and not the characters, it's truly lost its way, leaving us with very little to enjoy. Which brings us back to the Blood Moon. See this lunar eclipse that Soul Bond and Stargo made their relationship inevitable and constantly hung over both of their lives whenever they see of getting too close to another person. The whole Blood Moon soul bonding thing actually got resolved, but only in the dumbest way possible. He decides to play the angle of like, oh, what if Marco isn't in love with Star? It's just the Blood Moon. Only revealed that's a massive red herring, as once it's removed, he's immediately back to, oh shit, I was lying, I'm really in love with Star. The plot was so concerned with justifying why they aren't together, it made it easier to not want them to be. If they had Marco get rejected or actually show them as a couple in this show, it could have been something new to deal with and we could have had fun with that. Because stuff like the Blood Moon is great for shipping and theories, but it built itself up only to fall right back into the hole it came from, leaving us back at square one. Like my own personal theory for the Blood Moon, that it was going to be the manifestation of the lead boy-girl couple getting together. That it was using its magic to ruin their other relationships, or threaten anyone who got in Starko's way. That they would have to break the connection, not because Marco's feeling fucking lovesick, but because they became an active threat to Tom and Kelly. And it was this insistence that no, this must happen that it needs to happen, and it could have been the subversion that this show desperately needed, while still leaving the opportunity that they could get together without this blood moon hanging over the relationship, because they actually loved each other. But nah, it was just heartache. Nothing interesting, just a long drawn out story with no payoff and only the barest of material to justify the episode. Shipping is fun and the shit show that this turned the fandom into was an absolute blast. The shipping focus though just put a cloud over these two characters so that whenever they were hanging together there was just this awkwardness that there wasn't in the first season. Star is dating Tom yet we only see her hang out with Marco who we know is still into her. It just adds this extra complication to a dynamic that it just wasn't needed. Season Season 1 felt like they were partners in crime, while Season 4, they felt like they were doing crime. Star vs. The Force of Evil handicapped itself by making Starko wait till the end of the show to get together and forcing out any characters it couldn't use. It was a good show, but sad to say, the shipping made it worse. The fandom reaction was funny as fuck though, so at least I had that.